Hello folks and welcome to the channel and this is part number two of rebuilding the barn and as you can see it is empty. Okay I've been 100% honest the barn is not fully empty there's one part left which is this divider so I'm just gonna grind it down and disassemble it because it's a bit too heavy in one piece uh, to lift it on my own and at least now I can recover the materials there's some pretty good plywood and the metal is still all right so why not keeping it I hate to throw things away Before we start, I just want to answer a few comments that were made on the previous uh, video and they were good comments, so thank you all for that. One of the comments was that insulation on the roof uh, might not be all that good if I'm not going to heat up the barn. Yes, you're absolutely right, I'm not going to heat up the barn, that is not the intent. And I've given it some second thought. The boards that are on the rafters, these are cement boards uh, enforced with some fiber. It is not what you would think asbestos, but some people might think that is not the case here. But as you can see, these boards are breathing and it's been raining like hell here lately. And you can see a little bit of humidity coming through. It's not wet, but it's, it's humid. So if I was to close this up now with insulation panels that don't breathe, I'm going to create kind of a cooking center for all kind of mushrooms and crap. And I think the, the wood will probably rot. So it is probably much better for this type of a roof as it is now to leave it open so it can breathe and dry out. So maybe it is better not to put the insulation panels up or at least not the type that I was looking for before which is kind of a bullet terrain foam with aluminum coverage on both sides. So I'm not going to do this right now. Um, so that's a part I'm not going to do. So thank you for that comment. The other comment was the arc that we have here. Some people say the arc was, had, had been sacked. And yes, you're right, the arc is sacked. But it's been like this for as long as I know the farm, which is about 30 years or so. So it didn't move at all. And some people said, well, maybe you should enforce it with some steel or something like this. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to lower that gate and the top part will actually be supporting that beam. But this is not for now. This is for a video coming much, much later. So one of the things we're going to do with the walls is we're going to shot blast them a little bit, especially the areas where they are dirty, because this used to be a potato barn and they piled up the potatoes all loose in this barn. So that is one of the things we will do. We'll clean up these walls and for that we're going to shot blast it. We, we also have these concrete blocks that are covering a ducting, an air ducting channel, and that was used to vent the potatoes. And there are areas where it's missing. So I need to dig this out a bit and then refill this up with stabilized sand and some concrete on top of it before we go in to put the nets up and the insulation sheet and then the final uh, 10 centimeters of concrete floor. So I need to stabilize that first of all. So that's going to be a little bit of work to be done. And we've got lots of old ivy that came through uh, the roof there on the top, which I removed me while on the outside. So all this stuff will have to go and we need to clean that up. That's a small support rafter, which is actually broken. I don't know how it broke. I have no idea. But that is certainly something we go in to replace uh, with another one because we can't have that in the roof. Again, it's been like this since I came here 30 years ago, but uh, it's probably a good idea to have that fixed. There was a good comment on how these beams are kept together with these pins. And I think you're probably right that this is very solid. That's how it used to be done in the old days and they last for a long time. Unless, of course, they would be rotten. Uh, typically, they should be oak. I will inspect those and see where I need to replace them. And in some places, I already have installed some additional enforcement with metal panels and bolts through the beams, as you can see on the bottom of the screen. And then finally, we will have to shot blast those metal bars that are spanning from one side of the barn to the other side of the barn. And those are holding together the walls, basically, because this was a potato farm 
and they filled up the potatoes almost all the way up to the roof and these potatoes were loose so they would push onto the walls and they make the walls go open. That is why they installed these big um, metal beams here. Now somebody asked me the question if these were railroad bars? No, they are not. I think they are leftovers from the First World War when there was a cannon installed here in a military headquarters uh, right here on the farm. And that kind of stuff looks like it. But on the other hand, it may as well be just construction iron. Now those bars will shell blast and paint it with anti-rust paint. If you look closely on this one, you can actually see that the rod doesn't do nothing anymore. You know, the, the nut is like uh, two inches below the bar. So we can cut all that off. So here we have one of the top walls and that wall will have to be repointed. So that's going to take me a little bit of time to do so, but it's the right thing to do. And as I mentioned before, we will have to clean up all the walls and get the ivy off the walls. This is dried up ivy. In fact, I removed the ivy on the outside some time ago. But still, there is a lot of cleaning up to be done because I don't want any of this debris still around especially not if we're going to polish the concrete floor. This is the old air ducting channel. It's already filled up with a lot of debris. I mean, basically all old bricks, but as you can see, the panels don't look up. So I have to make sure that this is right, because otherwise it's going to be tough to pour concrete on it. It's a very heavy block. So I'm going to try to get those all lined up so then I have one big opening on one side only. So as you can see, the ducting is actually filled up with debris of bricks. So now I'm going to pour a slight slab of concrete and it's going to be poured concrete which is one part of cement and four parts of sand mixed with water and then I'm going to pour it on top of those bricks that I just placed in there and that are now smashed.
think this is about right, so uh, let's pour it out. So the floor is uh, now patched up and of course this is not concrete as such, uh, it's a one to four uh, ratio of cement and sand. Uh, it's, there's no metal inside, I have no net inside, but that's not necessary because I have filled it all up with bricks so it's just to make it even because now on top of it we will have a um, plastic foil coming all the way, all over the floor to protect it from humidity. And then there will be a steel net being installed and then finally uh, the concrete will go on top of it which is a about 10 centimeters of concrete on top which will then be polished but this is not for now so now it's time to clean up the walls and to clean up the walls i'm going to shell blast it with garnet 360 which is a very fine mineral and i have it in these bags here and for that one you're going to need an air compressor the compressor that I have here will deliver about 8 bar and that's more than enough. I might even bring it down a bit depending on how soft the bricks are. And of course there's a couple of other tools you're going to need with this. Now you don't need to have all this. If you don't have this you can rent it. But it's really helping you out and cleaning up things instead of using a steel brush and things like that. And it gives you normally a pretty good result. So we're going to need a container to put the media in or the garnet. And I'm using an IPEX system. Now you might have seen this before when I was doing old Rusty, when I was shell blasting the body of the car. But I've used it also for shell blasting oak beams and so on. And here is the gun for that. So you can change the nozzles, so wide, smaller nozzles, whatever you're going to need. The media goes inside and it's very handy. But you can't use this on itself directly from the compressor because you're going to get condensation. And that's the worst thing you can get, condensation inside the hoses. So you're going to need an air dryer. And here it is, the air dryer. Um, it goes with the size of the compressor typically. The bigger the compressor, the more volume of air you're pushing out, the bigger the air dryer has to be. But if you're going to rent this, that typically comes with all that. And in the front, you'll see you've got all kind of filters. You have an input and an output, and then the humidity will be drained out. So this is drying the air before it gets to your actually uh, gun. So let's hook it up and see what happens. Here we got the input. So we're going to shot blast the walls with garnet, but on the roof and the rafters, I have a lot of cobwebs and a lot of dust and for that I'm going to use this metal bar that I made some time ago. In the front I created the small nozzle. In the back I have a valve that I can open and close and the connection to my air hose. So with this I can actually blow off all the dust on the ceiling and the rafters on the roof. So let me show you on how we're going to blow off the walls with this compressed air. I'm going to open it up. Now for the real work on the rest of the walls, I'm going to wear a dust cap and a mask to protect myself. I didn't wear it here just to show you on how it works so I can even talk to you and see what I'm doing. Otherwise it would look a little bit weird. All right, as you have seen, that is quite easy. So this wall is not all that clean. There's a lot of white stuff on it. So let's see how that cleans up if we're going to shot blast it. If the bricks are very soft, I will have to lower the pressure. But let's see. So this is going to be a voiceover because I can't really talk to you while I'm blasting. And here I'm putting on my protective helmet. It's a helmet that has a double shield in the front and it has compressed air inside. Now when I say compressed air, I really mean fresh air with a little bit of overpressure. So it will keep all the dust out of the helmet. 
as you can see you have a pretty clear vision here I'm just removing some pink paint on some old patches but the rest of the wall was already being shell blasted and again when I shell blast um, I try not to remove everything because otherwise you tend to damage the bricks and once that shell blasting is done I go around with this high pressure air hose and I blow off all the dust as you can see it has taken me quite a bit of time and luckily I had this high lift uh, this is the lift that I got some time ago from a business that stopped it didn't work so I replaced the batteries inside and I fixed some hydraulic hoses and now this is a great tool to use so if you have the space look around because you can find this kind of stuff so here I'm about ready to go all the way up and start blasting that uh, arch there uh, the one that sagged a bit as paper said and here you can see that there's a big beam in the back and to be honest if you're going to blast uh, you're gonna make a lot of dust as you can see so um, it's always good to do it in the open air or have the gate open so that you don't have all the dust inside and I got lucky it was quite windy that day and here I'm hooking up my air supply and uh, my screen was getting fogged up so it was I couldn't find the hole and here you see how good this shell blasting is working I'm working with a very small nozzle a three millimeter nozzle only of course this video is a little bit accelerated because I don't want to spend too much of your time on it and the reason that I'm working slow uh, is I don't want to damage the walls as I said before because these walls are a mixture so we're done with shelf blasting the walls and I can't say that I regret it because this was a dirty and nasty job to do but now the walls they look clean they don't look all the same because they are different bricks nevertheless so now it's time to get all this debris out and there's all these old pieces of ivy and other kind of crap that came off the wall so I need to get all this out but also 125 kilograms of garnet of course that's the media we were using to blast the walls with once we're done with this we will then continue and do some more changes uh, on the walls on the floor to make it level and we'll also will of course then paint actually those metal beams that we cleaned up the concrete slab that we're going to put in is going to be about five inches uh, so it's about this high and you can see that these bricks here are about the height of the slab so I will have to take these bricks off on the side here so I can have the concrete getting all the way to the side of the wall I don't like to do this but we don't have a lot of choice Now I'm going to paint the metal beams or the rails and for that I'm going to use a metal paint and this is a two-in-one paint in fact it is a primer and a final coat and it's actually anti-rust so it's going to protect all this uh, from further rusting and it will neutralize even the rust nowadays there's a lot of good paint around in the old days I would have used lead mini but now that's no longer needed now I'm going to apply this with a brush because the paint is fairly thick so here we go now the paint I'm using is not shiny paint it is satin so it's not matte, it's not glossy, it's somewhere in between. So while I was painting the beams with the brush, uh, I noticed that my brush was getting worn out very quickly. And that's because those iron beams are 
fairly rough still, although we did shell blast them, but also they are pitted and it makes it extremely hard with a brush to fill up all these little pit holes. So that is why I'm going to change tactic. I'm going to use my spray gun now uh, to paint those uh, steel beams. I know um, it's a change of plan, but it's only fools that never change their mind. So here you have the beams, all nicely cleaned up. So folks, we've done so far a lot of work. We are finished with painting the metal bars. Now it's time to reinforce the roof in a couple of areas. Not that I really have to, but since I have the opportunity to do so, I will. Because if you look over here, you see this diagonal support that we have. And on this side, well, it's kind of missing, isn't it? And it used to be there. I can still see it, the nails are still there. So I'm going to install a couple of those. I have one here and have two more on the other side. And then there's another one on the other side. So it's in total four of them that we have to install. So I'm gonna use some old wood for that. So let's start. So let's see how long the support has to be here. And I think if I do it in one meter 70. All right, so let's have a look what we have still available to us. I never throw away wood. That's one of the things I never do. So I need one meter 70. I think this one will do the job for us. That's at least one. That's number two. Let's see what else we got. I got a couple more on the side there. Which There's nothing wrong by reusing old wood as long as it's in good condition. And just pulling the nails out with a crowbar. So I'm going to put some 45 degree angles on those support beams here. On both sides to a length of 170 centimeters. So I'm not going to use nails, instead I'm going to use these Hapax screws and those are fairly long screws. They are self-tapping, very strong, but I will have to pre-drill my support rafters first. And again guys, I'm not making a commercial for any product nor do I get anything for free. But if something is good, I don't mind to mention it. And these screws are really good, but you need to pre-drill them. And here is my little bit, which I will pre-drill into the beam first. The back part will actually fit into the roof. So I'm going to need a T30. No, nope, that's the one. That should fit properly. So I'm going to pre-install all these screws because that makes it a lot easier. Because if you work on your own, um, it's not easy to hold things in place. All right, that's it. If you're going to use screws, you've got to make sure that they are long enough. And look how long that one is. And it's already fitting all the way through. And you probably can see it, the tip right there. So uh, now we can go and install it. So that should go right there where the old nails were. Some. Ah. All right.
do it over here as well. Get it in the beam. So I've gone around the barn and I've gone around the barn and we have on the beams uh, anchors towards the walls and these are metal parts. Now I noticed this one is only held in place with one nail which is a little bit uh, on the low side. So I'm going to put some bolts into that as well. All right, so that at least will hold it better. I'm going to do this all around the barn. So folks, we have come to the end of this video and we've done all the work that we had to do to prepare the barn to receive the new concrete uh, slab, which is coming on Monday. And then there will be a special video on that concrete slab on how that has been installed, how it's been polished. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.